presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, John in Orlando. John, what's going on, brother? Good afternoon, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Good, good. I want to tell you, I've been listening to you since your radio days back in 99. Appreciate what you guys do. But what I really enjoy that you brought back to Lord, this guy is as smart as a whip. I, I am so he, happy for that feedback. Yeah, because he's one of a kind. He's got to be the number one market timer. I'm telling you, it's like he calls it really, really he, good. He does. I really appreciate the feedback, man. Yeah, yeah. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I hope you all are having a good day. We have Basil on today. Sadly, Tim will not be on, but he'll be joining us Thursday again. Um, no, we're all looking forward to his analysis. Looking forward to hearing from Basil. Let's take a look at what we got going on right now. You have the E-mini up about 1.5%. Same with the SPY. Russell up about 1.3%. The NQs up about 0.2%. Uh, Dow futures up nearly a full percent there. Uh, let's see here. You have the dollar kind of staying a little bit to the downside here, right? So we're coming off that 103 level down to 102.56, most likely to do uh, with the cooled inflation data uh, that we had yet lower PPI. Same thing uh, with CPI as well. We're going to go over that in a moment here. Something that's unique to say. Well, first, let's say gold's up a little bit. You have silver down slightly, copper nearly flat. You have crude oil coming back down after, you know, quite a big pump up. You know, this this lower price helped us a lot in CPI, of course. That's involved in the volatile CPI. So, you know, depending on what the news wants to talk about, it doesn't, doesn't necessarily matter, right? You, you kind of look at core CPI, which is that stuff, less food and energy. Um, but regardless, energy commodities uh, were far lower both in May and June. So helping with that contraction. Let's see, still dynamics a little bit. Tesla roaring back, probably a little bit to do with his conversation with presidential candidate Donald Trump on the X platform yesterday. Maybe what we were talking about a little bit before the end was a bit prescient um, because with that, I mean, the Trump media stock has dumped even further off about 3.5%. That was really the question I was posing at the end of the day yesterday is like with, you know, Elon Musk buying X and this whole deal with whatever it is of, of, of censorship and all that. Does Trump media or Truth Social um, have, have a place? And I'm just like, probably not really. Right. I, I think that was the reason for the advent of that. And now with Elon Musk, who's cozying up to Donald Trump. Does it seem like there's much need for something like Truth Social? And so you're seeing DJT dump a little bit right now. Let's see what else. You have Meta up a little bit, Google up, talking about their new Pixel phone with AI in it. Uh, very nice. Disney still doing nothing. Apple up a little bit. Um, and then Lucid popping as well. That's been a pretty volatile stock recently. Let's talk uh, about CPI quickly. I'll pull over uh, the BLS chart here. So got it adjusted. You know, year over year, the all items, I mean, 3% is pretty solid, right? If you're looking for a two target, you had food in June only increasing just about uh, 0.2 right here. Same with food away from home, roughly. You can see these contractions in energy, which are helping quite a bit as well. Let's see, the number one big thing, at least year over year, was used car and trucks. That's been nice. Transportation services up, shelter up. You know, I'm really curious, I, uh, you know, I'm not sure what the exact correlation is going to be with this because we're still in the nascent stages of these investigations. But, you know, these this antitrust investigation into real page, right? I mean, they're they're price fixing the rents. Does that have an impact on this? I would say, yeah, probably. But the point is, is how much the question is, how much weight does that have? Right. And it'll be interesting to see if this actually contributed quite a bit uh, to the increase um, at least in shelter. So we take the food index rose 0.2% in June after increasing 0.1 in May. The index for food at home rose 0.1. Energy index fell 2% in June as it did in May. Again, we're just pumping uh, so much 
The index for all items, less food, so that's the core CPI, rose 0.1% in June. So this is the smallest increase in this index since August 2021. Uh, of course, everyone's like, hey, man, that probably means we're going to get this, uh, this rate cut really quickly. Now, Bostic from the Fed said he wants still a little more data on economy before cutting rates. He said it'd be really bad. Obviously, we started cutting rates and we had to turn around and raise them again. This is a thing that can happen because I'm willing to wait, but it's coming. You're having this weird confluence again, like a disconnect between what the Fed's saying, maybe what the data's saying, and on top of you know what the bankers are saying, maybe some analysts. You have a lot of analysts saying that you're going to have to need, uh, it's going to require a, a greater percent rate cut uh, because of this looming recession. This is interesting. I had an article pulled up that uh, imports are not slowing down in any capacity, um, which you would expect to see uh, before a recession happens. Um, and then you have Bank of America also coming out and saying that they don't see a recession um, happening. A lot of interesting stuff going on uh, with this for sure. So, you know, we take a look at what's going on in the SPY right now. And we're moving up, but this is still on, no, we're not at the end of the day yet, but it's still on contracting volume. There's not a lot of volume going into this run-up today, right? So the excitement maybe isn't fully there. Maybe people might be a little, I don't know, just some apprehension in getting in on it, right? But this, you know, I, I think can kind of suggest that you're setting up for maybe a retest of lower levels. Maybe we go sideways, see what happens. Um, but anyways, that's something to really keep in mind, that a lot of this move up, we can look in you know, the composite itself, same kind of movements, right? Now, you're getting a little bit of a boost, at least in the composite, um, from these AIPC sales. This has been, like, massive for a lot of these companies. You're seeing Intel pop up today. You're seeing AMD pop up today. Let me see if I can get uh, the exacts on it. And it's interesting. I think it was something like 14%. Yeah, let's, yeah. You have Apple 1.7% up today. AMD up 246 Let's pop that on the chart right now. And this idea is that you've had 14% of all PCs shipped during the last quarter, right? Were these AI capable PCs? This is driving a lot of you know, consumer, at least it's it's taking up a lot of, of that chain. I mean, like to have something released just in one quarter now it's comprising 14% of all sales in that quarter is pretty decent. And I would still think that a lot of people are still apprehensive to buy one. They don't know what's going on with it. Um, you know, that changes as these things, you know, in the future are really going to be the only thing you can buy are these AI capable PCs unless you go to some very uh, niche kind of brands. This is 8.8 .8 million AI capable PCs. Apple's dominating the AI capable PC market with its entire Mac lineup, which features the M series chips with the neural engine. The company recently unveiled Apple Intelligence. Windows side OEMs like Lenovo, HP Inc., and Dell are significantly expanding their AI capable PC portfolios. Of course, I think Qualcomm got downgraded the other day. And now we're back up trading about 3.2%. People are loving uh, Snapdragon chips. Uh, folks, stay right there. We're going to be right back with Basil Chapman. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. 
This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. This, of course, is the Tom O'Brien Show. If you take a look over at my screen here, I'm looking at the newsletters tab on TFNN.com. We go down here to the second row. The first column, you have opening call by Basil Chapman. Now, what is pretty solid about this? Basil comes on every Tuesday. Love listening to him. His show is on at uh, 10 a.m. Eastern time. That is the Tiger Technicians Hour. Now, Basil had just done on July 23rd a subscriber webinar. Now, this is one of the perks you get when you're an opening call subscriber. He does these webinars talking about this circumstance was the sectors and stocks to focus on in this next phase of the market cycle. Uh, and this is accessible to all subscribers of the opening call newsletter. What is also very cool that Basil does is he does a little Saturday update, a little briefing for the week. Um, just a lot of stuff going on with it, and it's just fantastic. It really gets into it. I love his analysis. And uh, if you subscribe today, if it's your first time, we have a 30-day money-back guarantee um, on all of our newsletters for first-time subscribers. And for whatever reason, it doesn't work out for you. Basil, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Jacob. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Quite an interesting market today. Good CPI report. We'll see what happens with it. You know, it's, it's fascinating because, in a sense, the market is ignoring a lot of things. It's just in its own trajectory. And if you look at this chart here of, of the Dow, uh, here on the left is the daily, in the middle is the weekly chart, monthly on the right. Uh, you can see that I've got a trend line that I drew in from the round number 38,000 low that was made uh, beginning of June. We went all the way to 41,376.00, a round number, all-time high. It's just <laughs> unbelievable that you can get that in an index that's at 41,000. That was on the 18th of July. We came down pretty sharply, and we went to 38,409. But you can see by this chart <clears throat> that this trend line, this diagonal trend line that I drew from the day before the big gap down to the low on that uh, Monday a week ago, um, that trend line was exact resistance on all those big spikes uh, since Tuesday of last week. So here we are. And what have we done today? We've extended that rally. And one of the things I've been looking at is for subscribers to open and call. <clears throat> well, we went long the day of the low because the volatility index this is amazing. The volatility index, oh, I typed it in the wrong place. Let me type it over here. Went to 65. Well, 65, when you think of the news, the news wasn't that bad. I mean, the overseas, there was Japan was down 20%. Uh, there was um, 
There were just a lot of things going. There was a carry trade situation. 65.75, a spike like that, when we were just the previous day, we were down under 30. That goes to the 85.47, 85.47 high of March of 2020. That was a coronavirus. There were business questions. There was the Fed. There was interest rates. So I, the, everything I looked at suggested that that was going to be some kind of a low of consequence if the VIX dropped. Well, it has gone from 85.75 to 18.27. That is really, that's a... That is a huge, it's like, I call this the Eiffel Tower, and since the, uh, it's appropriate since we just uh, finished the Olympic Games in <laughs> Paris. <laughs> Look, it goes straight up and straight down. This particular pattern looks like an uppercase A, and uh, it could stop at any point, but the fact is it's given impetus to the buying. So what So what we've done, we, we are long for subscribers, kind of aggressively long um, in the uh, Dow. We've already been long since the 20, uh, March 2020 low uh, in the Dow and then the October low of 2023, uh, 2022. And we've just added to that again. And now what we're looking at is for the first time since that low was made uh, back on Monday the 5th, we're looking at leg B above this. Now the day's young. Anything can happen in 35 minutes. But look what's happened. We are above that line that trend line resistance. And that to me is really important because the technicals have been very weak. Even the nine period moving average has not gone above the 14. So it's a work in progress, I've said to subscribers, but I anticipate that there should be some higher highs to come. I've got a feeling that the previous high of 41,376 in the Dow, I think I don't think we're getting there in this particular move. I think it's going to get bumpy from here, but I think the trajectory is higher highs and hopefully uh, higher lows. Um, we're also um, along many other uh, uh, positions. We raised a lot of cash waiting for this big sell-off. That's what my webinar was all about. We've been putting that, that money to work. And most importantly, we've got – I like to have positions where – there's different price ranges because I have subscribers. They, they're able to put money to work at all different levels. They don't mind if, if something costs $300, uh, like the uh, the uh, Dow itself or Microsoft. We are still long Microsoft. We we're in uh, we're long from uh, way back at uh, 380, and uh, here we are at uh, sorry 338. Here we are. At 414, we've already gone to 468, and even Microsoft's acting quite well. So I think it's been a very important uh, rotation through different uh, areas of the market and uh, being very selective now. And I'm going to uh, show a particular chart. I usually don't do this when we are so early into the into the uh, position, but it just I just wanted to show the technique, as I say, we, we are long positions in all different price ranges. So I also like to get for subscribers stocks that are in the single digits. So we have a stock called Genius Sports Limited Data Betting Marketing. It's out of London. And we've actually got two positions. And one of the patterns that I look at, I'll, draw, I'll show this expanded for you to see, is that I look at this big cup formation. It can have a smaller one like a bowl and then it extends. And that's the pattern that we've been looking at. And I've got a trajectory with the Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line here that says that there's a chance that we can get to the 7.51 area. And that takes you to uh, the 19th of August. So we'll be watching that closely. But it's based on this particular pattern with the 751 high back in March of earlier this year. So I like to look at that. I like to look at cup formations. I like to look at the bowl formation. And even more importantly, you can get them in different time sequences. So here's one that goes to $7.77, same stock. And that's the 200 period moving average high that was made back earlier in 20, uh, back in February. And that went to $7.77. So I've got uh, this possibly rallying to different heights. And the uh, first real resistance will be at this 200 period moving average, which is at 7.29. So I like to look the, put the package together. And as you said, on weekends, I do an overview. I, I, yep. I, we look at very closely what has worked, what should work, what we're doing, what we're looking at, what we want to put money to work in, what what um, is perhaps a good area 
but I don't see anything yet. We have to wait for a pullback. And I like to treat that as really a big market overview for what subscribers would be looking for for the coming week and using uh, material of you know what, what we've had already. Fantastic. Yeah, Basil, um, really looking forward to hearing from you tomorrow. You're on at 10 a.m. for the Tiger Technicians Hour. Folks, if you haven't checked it out yet, strongly recommend and check out the opening call newsletter. Again, 30-day money-back guarantee if it's your first time. It doesn't work out for you, but we're betting you're going to like it. Uh, Basil, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Jacob. Folks, stay right there. I'll be right back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, everyone. Jacob Sheep filling in for Tom O'Brien. This is the Tom O'Brien Show. We were just joined by Basil Chapman of the opening call newsletter. Again, I really recommend checking this out if you haven't yet. And while you're at it, go ahead. We have a bunch of different newsletters as well and services uh, we have 
This is Tom from last year. Here we have Tim Ord. Now, sadly, he's not on today, but if you guys like Tim Ord's stuff and you kind of want to get a little bit more of an insight, because, you know, I mean, the Elliott Wave and all that is, yeah, that's a lot to, to digest if it's your first time hearing it. Now, once you understand it, it's pretty awesome. Uh, but luckily, Tim has done two newsletters for us, so strongly recommend checking that out. Of course, we also have two newsletters, um, excuse me, uh, webinars from Teddy Kekstad as well. He comes on uh, to the mon uh, morning market kickoff every Wednesday. That's a fantastic time. And if you're not in the Tigers Den, well, hey, listen, you should get in there. It is fantastic. We have a bunch of people, but it's never it never feels crowded. I don't know how we do it in there, but it is really awesome. And of course, thank you to all you YouTube people out there. I love hearing from you guys as well. Uh, I'm going to pull up Home Depot here for the moment, but I want to talk about first, right, this idea of the recession coming that people are talking about. I mentioned this is from uh, Trading analysts are saying an unexpectedly strong import wave keeps rolling through peak seasons, which is pretty fantastic. One of the biggest, let's see here, container volumes arriving from overseas at U.S. ports are averaging double-digit percentage growth since mid-July. Import bookings, which measure container volumes based on departure dates and for the ports of origin, are signaling that growth will probably sustain through August, right? And that is kind of our biggest fear, right? What happens until we get interest rate cuts, right? I mean, that... With the interest rate cuts, you get a little bit of cash injection into the market. Uh, obviously, the cost of capital is cheaper. And then also you have so much cash that uh, is ready to be deployed in the sidelines. That's either just sitting in cash, uh, maybe some of that money's in money market funds, uh, however that works. Um, I still think, I don't think, I mean, it's true that there's still a lot of short positions out. Um, excuse me, longs out for bonds. Um, so if people are expecting uh, these rates to come down uh, quite a bit. Do you look at Home Depot as well? Now, they missed a little bit, right? And this is kind of signs that the high interest rates are squeezing a lot of people. Uh, let's talk a little bit about it. Of course, they're still up today because what's really going to be, you know, everything that happened the past quarter in this were in this uh, publication, it doesn't matter if you get low interest rates. People start spending money in those environments. So you have it trading a little bit lower at the time of this article here. Um, but we're up about 1.53%. They reported second quarter 2024 sales growth of 0.6% year over year to 43.17 uh, billion. This is marginally missing the consensus estimates of 43.37 billion. That really is like, that's such a juggernaut stock. Um, the company stated that the total sales included 1.3 billion uh, from the recent acquisitions of SRS distribution, uh, customer transactions for the quarter fell 1.8%, comparable sales decreased 3.3%, and comparable sales in the U.S. dropped 3.6%. The growth, gross profit rose 1.8% year-over-year uh, to $14.4 billion with a margin of 33.4%. That's up 40 basis points year-over-year. Year. The operating margin was 15.1%, which is down 22 basis points, and this is all year-over-year. Year. And operating income for the quarter dropped uh, 0.83 percent to 6.5 billion. Yeah, so I mean, just kind of a little bit of a rough quarter. Um, but again, a lot of people aren't doing, you know, any work on their homes at this time. You know, whatever it may be, um, things are a little bit uh, expensive. I think this changes again with with lower interest rates, and that's probably why you're seeing the stock move up. You had, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, you had someone of a large sell-off on that kind of news. Right? Um, and then it just steadily came back up. I mean, your high volume, you know, I guess right here is really where your high volume is, right on the open, right? And going into the day. Um, whatever this pre market sell off was on this news, yeah, didn't really matter too much. Let's take a look at the big winner for the day, which is Starbucks. And by extension, the loser of Chipotle offset. Wow, look at that, huh? And that's some big volume to the downside for Chipotle. Yeah, they swapped CEOs, or at least the Chipotle CEO uh, went to Starbucks. This is moving it up 22.9% right now as it stands. Uh, really quite impressive. <laughs> the, uh, this is the old CEO of Chipotle. He's going to join Starbucks on September 9th. Uh, his name is Brian Nickel. Let's see what's going on with it. Shares of Starbucks are up 20%. Chipotle stock fell for 12%. The board made the decision recently. The company told Yahoo, uh, calling it an opportunity it couldn't pass up, given it Nichols' proven track record. And one of the things I will say is that he 
handled a lot of the weird controversy that was going on with Chipotle recently. He actually did it very well. And the way that that team deployed his videos uh, to kind of quell some stuff was really well done. One of the big issues that Chipotle faces, uh, at least in my opinion, and definitely the reason uh, why I stopped going because it would end up frustrating me, is just how widely the, the portions varied. And listen, I understand they have to like, you know, only give a certain amount, right? They're, I mean, food business is really tight margins. But seeing a guy like eke out just a little bit of food or whatever, when you know you're gonna pay about like 13, 14 bucks for this thing, uh, it can be a little bit agitating. And um, that apparently was becoming an issue for a lot of people. And sometimes they would go and they would get a lot of food and the next time they wouldn't. And so Chipotle was taking a hit from that. He dealt with that well. Well, now he's going to Starbucks. He also had another company just buy in um, a bunch of shares for Starbucks uh, as well, trying to get some board seats with that. So regardless, it seems pretty good for Starbucks. People like this without a doubt. Late last month, the coffee chain reported another challenging quarter with same store sales falling 3%, the second straight quarter of decline while traffic fell 5%. U.S. sales at Starbucks fell 2% during the quarter. Over the last year, Starbucks shares have dropped 23%. Uh, I'm not really um, a main customer at Starbucks in any way. Uh, not sure the last time I went into one. Um, so I'm not sure what that demographic is or what might be competing with Starbucks. You know, I would kind of assume you know, it's different, I would say, area to area. It, at least in, like, you know, Tampa and St. Petersburg, you know, there's a huge desire for kind of local coffee shops, right? Uh, Starbucks don't always get the the love. Maybe when they have these seasonal drinks or whatever. Uh, I wonder if that's the case, you know, generationally or if it's just kind of local. You also have Nike, <clears throat> excuse me, popping up quite a bit today, which I think was unexpected for a lot of people. Um, up 5.2%. Obviously off. We spoke about it today when this came down like that and how it has a long way to go to get up. I was talking about how its market in China is facing some pretty severe issues, I think, as China is kind of individualizing in a lot of ways, at least uh, fashion-wise. Some argument that they dump so much money in the Olympics, nobody really cares if, uh, you know, big Olympic stars wear clothes anymore like that. Uh, I'm not sure how you can quantify what the benefit was for Nike paying it, but they're up to date. And uh, we'll wait to see if there's some news coming out that we're not all aware of. Folks, uh, stay right there. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times the daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. 
a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We're about 1.5% in the SPY, up about 1.4% in the Russell right now. NQ is up about 2.3%. And those Dow futures up about 1% in total. Uh, gold is sideways right now. Uh, you know, I talk a little bit about you know, networking or cyber or tech uh, every now and then just because I think it's interesting and it's important to keep in, uh, you know, keeping the note on that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I do think a lot of investment opportunities will come from this in the future. Uh, so you have some two kind of interesting things going on right now in that realm. Uh, the first thing is that 2.9 uh, billion people uh, have been compromised uh, in a national public data breach. Now, national public data is a company that does like background searches. It has like XML APIs. Um, and they, they were basically buying a bunch of data from data brokers. They were doing web scraping. Uh, again, you know, it's not necessarily required that you need consent from people to do that. And what they were doing is consolidating that on the backside. And the problem is, is when you allow companies just to do this, um, they might not have the, the, the best security standards. So what happened is a group that goes by the US Department of Defense, which is ridiculous, um, hacked these guys. And uh, they were trying to sell it initially for about $3 million uh, worth in Bitcoin. And they decided to say whatever, and then just posted it live. Um, it's like a 300 gigabyte zip file, which is 300 gigs under compression. And uh, yeah, it has around 3 billion um, names of people, uh, first, last, uh, address, social security number. There's some conversation around the social security numbers not being super accurate, um, which I'm not sure if that's true or not, um, because I haven't looked at it and I'm probably not going to, because I can't open up 300 gigs of compressed data on any computer that I own. And, um, it seems that some of the addresses are outdated as well. Now, you can kind of see where this company was able to scrape all this national public data. Um, you know, if you type in people's names online, it might come up with an address that they might have lived at. Maybe it's five years ago, but maybe it is current as well. And this is just another reason why it's super important that, you know, we as people uh, make sure we're consuming correctly, right, from the same, from the, you know, correct companies that are, that are taking this stuff kind of seriously. Uh, and then hopefully at some point uh, the, the government does get involved um, you know, I'm not always calling for like government intervention and stuff, uh, but but in this realm, I don't think uh, the common person knows enough in any way um, to keep themselves safe. And uh, it has a lot of really strong implications. So it'll be interesting to see what happens like that. Uh, but the next new, actually pretty impressive thing that's happening is NIST uh, is going to release and leave it up to a government organization here releasing their first three finalized post-quantum encryption standards. But if you click on the link, it's not going to be released until tomorrow. So I'm not sure what that's about. So what NIST is, the National Institute of you know, Standard Technology, okay? This is a really actually kind of cool organization. So they do a lot of stuff for standards, you know, and network security and everything like that. But they also go as far, there's like some videos online you can watch of it. Um, but they'll give like, what the standard composition of like peanut butter is, right? Or what the standard composition of like canned tuna is. And uh, it's it's honestly a kind of weird, right? Um, almost like this dev room of 
<laughs> you know, like the, the actual good and what its component should be. So one of the big issues that we're running into um, with something in quantum computing, and I know there's a lot of stuff around quantum computing, there's some issues it still has, um, it probably won't be a long time, and it's totally not going to be used um, by anyone on a personal level, right? But as we're entering into the realm of like AI and these massive, you know, server behemoths, um, the government will also probably start spending a lot of money in uh quantum computing, it's just going to be an arms race. But I think right now we're focusing on the AI and building out the main servers and fueling them. Um, but, you know, a lot of encryption is done using something called the RSA, right? And the idea behind that is essentially you're scaling up, like, prime numbers. You're factorizing them to such a high amount that it's nearly impossible for a standard computer to understand what the factors are, right? So if I can give you a look here, like this is kind of the algo for it. This is the private key, this is a public key. I'm not gonna go all the way into that, right? But once you get this final number, it's, it's so large that it's really hard to figure out what this is and what this is, right? You need these to understand what this M is, right? RSA has been a standard for a long time. There was a dude at MIT who came up with an algorithm because, hey, no, you actually can uh, do this. It's called Shor's algorithm and quantum computers you know, can apply this and really unravel it. Now, this is a massive problem because so much stuff is encrypted using you know, RSA. And there's other standards as well for like integrity of data, like in SHA-256 and stuff. But the point is, is that quantum computing can unravel this and that would be uh, a pretty terrifying reality um, where you're just seeing you know, three billion, uh, and again, a lot of that stuff was hashed, right? But like data tables with people's you know, full names, where they live, social security numbers. And if there's a chance that you can break the encryption on that, I mean, then you just have everyone's business plain text everywhere. And this causes a lot of issues and it would be very bad economic. So it's interesting NIST uh, is releasing this and we're gonna see, I guess, what they are tomorrow. There's a few different uh, ways people are thinking of solving it, but I'm not gonna go into all those um, because they're kind of complex and to be honest, like I probably wouldn't do it justice in any capacity. Uh, but I found that really interesting. And then just in some stock news tied in there, WiseKey is popping today. And a lot of people just play this stock um, quite a bit. Um, so it's up 23.6% uh, today. Talk a little bit about Oaklo moving forward. How about that for a segue? This is up 5.74%. Now this is Sam Altman's uh, nuclear company and it's going to be using the Siemens energy system. Okay, and it was kind of interesting. We'll talk about this a little bit. The deal means Oaklo power plants will use well-known turbine technology from one of the power industry's main suppliers. The strategy will simplify the design and construction of the company power plants. This is according to the CEO, Jacob DeWitt. He said that the Siemens energy components would account for about 10 to 12% of the capital cost of an Oaklo plant. That's nice that they're utilizing kind of industry standards. Also interesting to note, since we were talking about like network security, that Siemens was actually the system attacked in the, uh, during the Stuxnet propagation in Iran, um, where a virus went and knocked out a lot of their refining capabilities. Talk a little bit about HelloFresh as well. Now, this is kind of cool. These yeah, this isn't on, I believe, in the New York Stock Exchange or anything like that, but you're going to start seeing a lot more of these companies, I think, starting up, and some of them will go public as well. You have these shares popping 19%, okay? And so what HelloFresh does is just sends you basically a lot of goods, like groceries and everything like that, and you can make the stuff at home. It has, like, a list you can follow. You're buying these meal plans. And honestly, they're competitive price-wise. I have a lot of friends that use Factor as well. And once these companies or some company that's public acquires them, I'd be very interested in looking into these kind of things. Um, again, everything's reported in euros, so not, you know, too much application right now. But I wanted to put that on your guys' radar. If you see something like that pop up, give it some due diligence. Um, because I think these sort of companies, like this model, is going to be so competitive in the future. Uh, folks, stay right there. We'll be right back for a very short segment.
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv welcome back everyone jacob shu filling in for tom o'brien it is the tom o'brien show of course we have a short segment here before the end of the day I hope you all uh, had some good trades today. Take a look at Boeing right now of about 2.5%. Um, slow recovery. Uh, said it delivered 43 commercial aircrafts in July, which is pretty flat. Let's take a look at that. Uh, the plane maker delivered 43 planes, one less than the total in June, and the same as in July 2023. Of the total, Boeing delivered 32 of its Workhorse 737 family models, as well as six Twin Isle 787 Dreamliners. Fantastic. Still, handovers over, excuse me, handovers a year earlier were unusually low amid a series of issues, including a supplier strike and logistical disruptions. So maybe not so good that they're still producing at that level or delivering at that level. City deliveries indicate that Boeing may be turning a corner. Ah, yeah, you know, they just came out and it, it's discovered that they have electrical issues on some of these planes, which now, you know, this takes so much time to kind of figure out what the problem is and, and rectify it, right? Um, so it's just kind of bad news after bad news for Boeing. You know, this company is just an extension in a, in a lot of ways. You know, it's very situated in the American economic system. You put it like that, right? And this thing just gets floated constantly. Maybe that's the reason it sticks around. I mean, they bungled the, they bungled the astronaut thing. I mean, those guys are still in space. And they might have to use SpaceX. They might have to use the the Russian capsules to get back. 
And it's just issue after issue after issue with the stock. You're still trading at 168. That's off its lows. You had some movement down at the beginning of August. Um, and perhaps this is bottom because I can't think of any more horrible news that could come out for the stock that could set it anywhere lower. Um, that's obviously kind of a weird holistic approach to looking at that. But regardless, very weird stuff for Boeing. Trading up 2.7%. Yes, up 1.56. The SPY up 1.5. And Q's about 2.39 currently. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. We'll see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. with Tommy O'Brien on the Morning Market Kickoff. Take care.